there was an incident a little while back in Israel that brought some greater issues to the fore, uh, which are not necessarily connected either with Israel or with Judaism. Okay, now a little eight-year-old girl, a uh, member of an Orthodox church, was on her way to her all-girls school. Uh, she was very modestly dressed, as is typical of Orthodox. Um, she had a long skirt on. She had a long um, sleeved shirt on. But she wasn't quite as modest as the, what are usually called ultra-Orthodox, although they object to that description. They're usually, they prefer to be called either strict Orthodox or Haredim. Haredim. And this group, which is a little stricter, was so offended by this child walking to school that they spat on her and called her names. Okay. Now, she's only eight years old. She's a shy, bespectacled, prepubescent child. And yet all this rage from the stricter Orthodox um, found its way onto this um, little unfortunate Orthodox girl. Now, why in the world would they attack her so? or assault her, or harass her. I don't, I don't know. They didn't actually attack her. But spitting, actually, I think, does constitute kind of an attack. But the point here is, what were they so angry about? And the reason they were so angry was that they have been taught, as many men are taught, who are Christian, who are Muslim, who are Mormon, who are various religions, that they sin if they desire any woman other than their wife. They have been taught that they sin if they think about sex outside of the context of marriage. Here's the problem. Um, they don't blame themselves for having the thoughts. They blame the female for arousing those thoughts. Okay, now the fact is that the human male is constructed in such a way that, like the human female, he's likely to think about sex a lot. Now, one way where male and female sexuality differ is that women tend to be more aroused by showing, and men tend to be more aroused by looking. Okay, and so... um. They t can't put this kind of hysterical emphasis on modesty because if they see something that's attractive, they desire or they feel a lust or um, sexual thoughts go through their minds. Now, um, I think it would be best if they were taught that, uh, hey, that's on you. Look away. Or... Um, you know, just chase the thoughts away if you can. But then again, you really can't. So um, the whole point, though, is that they don't really want to blame themselves. So they blame whoever it is who arouses them. And that, in turn, leads to a lot of misogyny. And it leads to a lot of, um, of uh, blame being put on the female. Um, I remember uh, hearing in a, in a Sunday school class that, uh, you know, the Bible says that it's a sin for a man to even, you know, lust after a woman. And that it's the girl's fault, too, because if she hadn't dressed the way she did, he wouldn't have lusted after her. Okay, now there's a real problem there. Because girls are usually taught and they naturally want to look attractive. But if they look attractive and somebody lusts after them, they're at fault. Okay, now uh, some people have um, tried to address this by basically making the female form disappear. Okay, there is a Haredi 
burqa group founded by a woman that basically puts the women in burqas. And of course, Muslims put women in burqas and, and shadors and all these other things. Now, oddly enough, and this has been noticed by others in the Haredi or strict Orthodox community, covering the woman up completely can sexually fetishize, fetishize her. You know, um, it doesn't necessarily mean that just because she's got a veil on, he's going to not lust. In fact, he might, it might kind of provoke him to wonder what's underneath there. Okay. The, and I think, okay, again, the basic problem is, is teaching men that they have sinned through their thoughts or teaching women that we have sinned through our thoughts is a problem in and of itself. I don't think a thought, unlike an action, should be considered sinful. Hope you enjoyed hearing that and will subscribe to my channel.